I told you this guy's a genius. Self-proclaimed, maybe. Well, as long as it works for him. Exactly my point. Awesome. This is the last time you're going to see me in light because I shall walk through darkness and that's always a bit fickle because you have to know how to deal with the darkness with the darkness there's light there's shadow um, I came from whence no, I came from whence I was and walked into the light. Interesting phenomena are happening um, okay, I have to be open about everything that happens to me and whether I feel bliss or intense sorrow you cannot say. I feel sadness. Okay, let me just walk you through what just happened. I'm a mischievous prankster. You know, I can be holy and I can be a bit, I mean, I say sadonic from what I believe to be sadomistic, which is, you know, if you have been observing humans for a while you may look at one and see something in them that hurts and then you may speak truth to them and you may say something you know sometimes you say something to someone and suddenly they get cross with you because you may have picked up something that sleep that is sleeping in the depth of their soul and there are very rarely people that you can just speak truth to that accept it, that hear it and that say, I believe you or I hear what you're saying. So how can I progress? Now you have to be a little bit careful. It's not about giving away all your secrets because each of us, we all have our own secrets. And if I go to you and I ask for your help, then what you would like to do is you would keep, you know, you would like to keep your secrets so that you remain in a position of power. So you go to a pastor in the church. He is in that, you know, I represent the holy church. Who says the church is holy? Well, the church itself. I say the church is holy as the church. This would be like saying I am holy because I'm my own church. Because that's what spirituality and egocentricism is. This is basically what everybody does. You know, that's what we mean when we talk about the ego trip. Now, if I've realized that you can trigger people in a certain way, you can right sell them a product okay but what does that mean 
Well, if I know you like women and softness, I'm going to sell you porn. Right? I'm going to sell you porn. And then you're going to watch the porn because you yourself are, let's call it vulnerable, to certain things that we may call, right, let's say sinful behavior. You know, if you're a follower of, let's say, the Christian church or the Bible, you know, this is not an easy task for me to walk through the darkness home, to walk through the darkness home and to, to speak while recording myself. But it's the challenge I set myself and I'm going to continue talking until the recording stops. But that in itself is hard. Why is it hard? Because, you know, I am carrying my own fear. You know, I don't want to project it, but that's just the feelings that come up. I create content on YouTube. I create content on YouTube. I create content on a podcast. I write books. And what I speak about are, you could call the methods to liberate you partly from your suffering. Now, is that a bad thing? You know, it's not to liberate you from suffering. No, believe me, you're not going to walk around and all the time be filled with joy. There are going to be moments where you will feel like this. And it may be true that at one point you will simply remain in bliss all the time. But I want to say something which is if you only experience bliss, you're going to dissolve and you're going to leave. And that's what I realized that suffering walking through the night, creating content, doing what my heart tells me, you know, that's my path. You know, if you try creating content just because you want to look like, you want to have, you know, glory rain down on me, forget it, man. If you're just doing it for the money, you may earn the money, but you will hate every step of the way. I hate sometimes, quite often, I feel hate, you see, there's a difference. Okay, what do I really want to talk about? You know, I'm just going to rip off the bandage. I was just in a position, I was in a, in the boulder hall, and sometimes I'm reluctant. The only reason I can talk freely about all these things is the following. I create so much content that the possibility of someone hearing it is basically non-existent. Like, they won't hear it. They won't hear it and that's why I can talk about it because they won't know that I've talked about it. That's the idea. But if somebody listens to this anyway, then and you were involved in this and you realize it because I'm not going to give your name or anything. But I'm going to talk about what happened. And if it's family, I'm probably going to say it. Because I believe, you know, sometimes we say, you know, we overappreciate family. You know, family is holy. Is it? Is family holy? I think it's in between. Is a priest or a pastor holy? I think it's in between. And that's why I have to say that it's, I don't like, you know, because that brings me now to a position of power. Just hear me out. You no, know, listen to what I'm saying. 
I'm some, I follow no religion. I follow my own truth. I follow a feeling, which is my, why I'm free to do as I please. Because there's nobody to tell me this is right, this is wrong. I basically acknowledge no one. Nobody can tell me anything. And if you're trying to tell me something, I'm going to leave. And this is how my mind stays open for whatever wants to come through from within. Okay. I have to test myself every step of the way. I have to test myself every step of the way. I have to test myself because I'm walking through darkness. I have moments where there's light and then I feel enlightened. And then people come to me and I walk around and I carry my light all the time. You know, even through the darkness, I know how to carry my light. I feel the fear, I feel the terror of being a human being, whatever that means, it's a word. I feel the terror, I feel the fear, I feel all the stuff that everybody else feels. Only I learned how to always have my candle lit. And now there's a question about whether I learned to keep my candle lit or whether something lighted my candle and said, your candle stays on now for as long as you are here and for as long as humanity needs you. And so you have to do something. The problem is if you feel overly righteous about what you're doing and your mission and your message, then you forget that we are all the same in this. We are all the same, right? So I was at the Boulder Hall, somebody came to me, we started speaking and then he opened up, whatever. I just drank a beer, right? I did my work, I drank a beer, I went down we started talking and he seemed to realize something in me. I think there is somebody who has understood something. And we started talking and he opened up and he said he's a pastor. I don't know, you know, he said he believes in the Bible. And somewhere along the story, um, okay, first of all, what does that mean? I follow no religion. I follow spiritual truth. People who follow the Christian church or the church in general are diminishing. They're getting less and less all the time. That's what I feel. That's what I hear, right? They are losing power because they cannot maintain this image anymore where they say, you know, we're holy and all that stuff because there's too much controversy. So even the pastors are having second thoughts because the church has been corrupted and they're now beginning to realize. And the ones that already realize it, they found something else, right? If you're celebrating with ayahuasca in a circle of people, you know, that's a church. And once you realize they've been corrupted because they don't follow God anymore, they just follow the substance and getting together and touching each other and hugging each other, which is why you just sit around worshiping God in the other person and you forgot to worship God in yourself and you forgot to worship God in nature. And that's the most important point. Go into nature, worship God in nature. And then you hear, you know, we had a nice conversation. I'm not going to go into detail because I'm also starting to learn, right? To keep things to myself, to not say everything unless I really want to say it, but I'm open and I say things, right? If I say something to you as a pastor, I don't know what you're going to do with it. I don't know what you're going to do with my knowledge. You know, because you seem like you're a bit greedy and you seem like almost a bit forceful, like you're trying to squeeze me for a lot of information that I'm unwilling to give you because I cannot give you more than you can handle. And I could probably, you know, because I also have to realize that when I leave, you're going to be on your own. You won't be able to contact me. And I like it that way, which is why I give you enough. Okay. So you can do what you're doing because you're not going to help me in the end. 
Because in the end, what you would say is, if I would then come to you, and now I, you know, I think I'm helping you, you know, and I really want to help you, and I want to help you, and what's going to happen then? I'm going to help you, I'm going to help you, and then what? You're going to say, yeah, now you have to convert to Christianity, and then you will come to church, and you will do as I say, you know? You find someone that carries the light, and then you corrupt him. So you turn him around, you take him away from the light, and you want the light for the church. But then I say, I have to leave now, because I have other things to do. I have to jump around, I have to, you know, I have to hike back. I have to... I have to go home through the forest. You know, I have to record myself, I have to talk. And you say, why do you have to do that? Well, if you're asking me this, I already know I have to leave. Because what you would say if you'd respect me, you'd say, all right, see you another time. And then when we meet, we can talk again. Now, I've never really met a pastor, but I've met one and he realized something in me, which is, you know, I just drank a beer. You have to understand why I'm telling you this. I was living like strict, strict, like super strict. Of course, what's the opinion of someone else? Okay, let me... There are a couple of pitfalls in the conversation I just had. First of all, you can make an ego trip out of it. I'm just going to use the word because I think humanity agrees upon, you know, what, you know, what the ego is. It's like identifying with certain, let's say, personality traits and then labeling them as good or bad. But the fact is, you know, as a matter of fact, and there's no fact, you know, there's no hard truth, it's all soft because it's all energy and it can all dissolve in any moment, which is why if I did bad today, you know, it's a judgment and I can look at it tomorrow and say, what was bad? What did I really do? You know, today it's basically gone if I can let go of it. Okay, this is troublesome. This is a lot of work. You have to constantly realign yourself. If you walk around and a pastor comes to you and he's asking you, let's say for help or for knowledge, for information, because he reads the Bible. He says, I believe in the Bible. All right, why don't you believe in yourself, man? Yeah, because that would be blasphemy. All right. You know, that's why I don't like Christianity or any strict belief or faith. You know, I look to the Indian culture and I say, well, what do they say? Well, what do they say, Indian culture? You know, think about it. What do they really say? It's all there. It's all there. It's all there inside you. There's the good, there's the bad. You'll find the middle and that's a feeling. And that's a place, you know, you smoke a joint, a doobie and suddenly you feel good. That's the feeling. You smoke a cigarette and suddenly you feel good. That's the feeling. You drink a beer and you feel relaxed and good. That's the feeling, right? To take it from Yogananda's autobiography of a yogi it's probably not yogananda's but just right it's good to just distance yourself a little and i don't get it people always merge into each other when you work somewhere your boss starts hitting on you right your colleagues starts hitting on you you go somewhere everybody starts hitting on you just because, you know, you have a good buddy and they think, oh, maybe he's gonna fuck me. It's like, what? I mean, what's holy these days? And then you're a pastor working for the church. And the only thing you got is words, you know? Like, here's the Bible, read it. <laughs> Study the Bible and be good. But what's good? And he, I mean, the Bible's been corrupted. You know, how much information do you find on fasting in the Bible? Very little, you know, I, I can only say I scraped through an online Bible which should hold all the information and I entered fasting and there was basically nothing. 
but here I am in the possession of a book that's supposed to have been handed down from Jesus and it basically describes in 40 pages or so um, how to fast you know seven days it even says that you're gonna wash out your demons it says that and I've done some of these things and sometimes I feel free and liberated you know sometimes I feel like this but my name is Christopher. Christopher. Who's Christophorus? Who is it? Okay, now it's dark. So I have to walk with my feeling, you know. I don't want to rush through this now. I'm just going to walk slowly. You know, Christophorus. He's the one who carries Christ on his shoulders. Okay, that doesn't make Christophorus Christ. It just makes him someone that can carry the burden of responsibility. And that means there are people and beings in this world that you may call yogis that have been taken out of the game that society is playing. And I just came from the boulder hall. And there's a very definite voice in my head saying when I think about I could sit here and I could sit on the bench. And there's a very definite voice in my head saying you have work to do. You can ask now what kind of work? You know, what do I have to do? If I would not believe in myself, I would not do anything. And that's basically how I started. I just said, fuck it, I'm just gonna relax. My name is Christopher, all right? That has a meaning to me specifically. You know, yes, yeah, so what? You know, there's millions of other Christophers. Yeah, but they're not me, but I am me. And I feel things and I want to do things. And I've been trained as a child to always stop. You know, you wanna run, stop. You know, first check the road. You know, you want to be a free thinker. Well, no free thoughts here. This is what you have to think. Yes, no, left, right, good, bad, right. This is the history and then they just lump all this shit on you. And I just managed to get rid of it, right? You know, they didn't manage. You know, the system tries to lump you with its own knowledge just to keep you a participant in the system but that's not really true it's also a guidance so there's no point to just worship the system but there's also no point to say it's bad and to demonize it but what's the voice telling me you've got work to do i'm gonna go back home and instead of laying around hating my life wishing i had whatever what am I going to do? I'm going to sit there and I'm going to work. Do you think Yogananda stayed up all night just because he loved it so much? Do you think so? I don't. Because it's hard work. And in order to sit and write from a place of truth, you know, that's nothing you just find in a book that's just something that comes out of you which is you sit there you take a pencil and you start writing and you don't know what's going to end up on the page or you start drawing something and you don't know what's going to end up you know you don't know what you're going to draw and then the question is how long will you be able to do this and what do you need to do it why do I need things to get there? Well, because I'm still learning. Because everybody is different. And because I have a history of, you could call it sinful behavior, but that's demonization. That's for the church. For me, it's, I have a history of wasting my energy because I was ignorant. You know, that has a different air to it. Why? Because, you know, 
only, you know, okay, if I would say ignorance is bad, ignorance, ignorance could be the same as sin. No, but ignorance is also trying to hold your own space. Sometimes I have to be ignorant because I'm in a room with 60 people, you know, or 12, and I can see trauma in people. I can dig for it. I can look for it. And, you know, it's not my place. But if I see something and a feeling says, go and say something, then you have to say it. Now, he approached me and I've been in these situations already a couple of times where, you know, I don't know where I am emotionally. But people can feel that I'm different. And that's not bad different, that's just, uh, I have problems placing you. Like you don't fit into any of the categories that I have for humans. And there are people that exist like this, that are like this. Like, who do you know that walks through the forest at night and just talks about this stuff? I mean, I don't do this. I could also think of a different life. If I would now sit here, I have to say these things and imagine how else could my life be? You know, I would chill somewhere, probably on an island, just let my balls swing around and just start my own family. But have you seen the state nature is in? Have you seen the state humanity is in? You see why I've got work to do. I don't know why I have to do the work now. Because time is of the essence. Because I want to live a life that is free of all these worries that I carry around now. You know, money and all that kind of stuff. So I just have to pay the price and I pay it with suffering. This how I feel now. I kind of felt like when I walked home or when I went swimming at night at 10, one degree Celsius outside temperature and I went swimming and I felt so much pain like I was being, like my hands were being smashed with hammers. I was being pierced with needles. That's how I felt like. Why? Well, we can say now, well, because, you know, I was a wanker. You know, I masturbated, I watched porn, I hit people, right? I punched people sometimes when I was a kid even. You know, I stole from people. Is that why? Or was there no energy flowing through my veins because of whatever reason you know it's like there's a numbness in people's fingers you know i couldn't really feel and when i started to feel it was a painful process you know it's like you sit with your legs crossed and then your legs fall asleep and we all know what's going to come next when you realize you lost the feeling of your right leg pins and needles well it's that if that's not torture but it's kind of like you know bliss also because wow you know i've got my leg back and now you think how it's gonna feel if you got your heart back if you got your feeling of i'm alive back you know that stuff comes with in waves because if your heart would just open, like right now, all of it, you'd be dead. That's what you call a heart attack, I think. So, you know, what's my place in all of this? So I have a conversation. He says, I'm a pastor. And we start opening up and he says, I like you because you are honest. Yes. But I also hate myself for that. Because, you know, sometimes I would just like to keep things to myself, but I'm just a chatterbox. 
and it just comes out. And if you poke me, I'm gonna give you something, you know, until I feel like now I've had enough and then I'm just gonna leave. Because I don't want these kinds of followers, you know, because you can follow yourself. You know, all you have to do is retrace your steps. How did you get where you are now? And then I don't have to sit around and talk to you. No, I can just sit at home, make content and talk to myself. Right? And think, yeah, maybe at some point, you know, there's gonna be this woman, right? Which I keep thinking of. That's my thing then. Right? That's something, you know, I don't wanna be a priest. You know, I don't wanna live in celibacy. But if celibacy is it for me, you know, I'm gonna take it. Because all I do is, you know, I put one step in front of the other. And that's how I get home every time. I just retrace my steps. You know, I just say one step in front of the other. I don't know if my next step is gonna land on some really sharp stone. You know, I have these a lot. You know, I don't know that. I know that I still have fears. I realize that there are things I cannot do. I will not do, I have no desire to do. So I don't just follow my desires. I mean, I test myself. I have followed a lot of my desires. Porn, booze, everything. And I still drink a beer once in a while and then it relaxes me into being who, you know, I feel comfortable being. And then you drink a beer and you go down and suddenly there's someone and you think, hmm, what is this? <laughs> Where did he come from? <sighs> now I hear something, could be a human and it could be a cow. You don't know. Is it gonna run through the fence and attack me? Well, I don't know. If I carry love in my heart, will the tiger let me live? Right? I don't know. Um, you see, I'm not at the place where I can, you know, I don't, you know, I don't wanna label it. I've got a lot of trust in myself. I've got a lot of love in my heart. But I also have to make choices and draw boundaries. I'm not a pastor because I chose not to be. Because pastorism would have been a drag to me. You know, being a farmer would have been a drag to me. This comes relatively easy. But I also am willing to pay the price, which is, you know, carrying my own weight. And just accepting that other people will find, you know, that's how it used to be. It's starting to change. And that's the weird thing. Because I feel still, I feel different. Okay, I can say that. But I also feel in some ways the same. You know, what liberated me is being honest about everything. And that's what my podcast helped me to do. I liberated myself by simply putting it all out there. And, you know, I continue living, I continued living my life the way that my heart is telling me to live my life. There's no Bible, you know. I listen to what others say, what others have done, but then I do it myself in whatever way I feel like doing it. And, you know, a priest or a pastor or whatever, a teacher, you know, they cannot simply do what, you know, they have to also listen to what their heart says. And if your heart feels like, you know, you can feel compassion and you can feel hatred. And if a pastor says, well, there's a difference between the Quran and the Bible, you know, what kind of difference? Do you want to tell me the Bible is right and the Quran is wrong? Now, walking here at night, recording myself and speaking is not easy. 
because there could be someone coming now. There could be a wild animal walking around. <sighs> well, I can only trust that I'm gonna get I'm gonna get home safely. But I often feel like I'm just screaming in myself. If somebody would come now, okay, could be that I would sense it, and maybe I just should be quiet now and honor the forest at night. Cheers. Okay, just because I really like the voice of my own voice, the sound of my own voice, and because I left now the thickness of the forest behind, you know, I'm still in the forest though. And the question that I just, you know, I'm just always in some kind of conversation with myself. I mean, there's questions and there's answers. If you ask questions, you're going to get answers. You know, you're going to ask a question. Are you going to like the answers you're being given? You know, that's what acceptance is. You know, it's not enough to just read the Bible and then you think, now I know it all because you're still an individual. You may find truth in the Bible. Certainly, it's possible, but only if you look for it. So it's not just about reading the words. It's about looking, reading them. How do you feel about it? What's the true meaning? You know, I'm not sure how much truth you can find in the Bible. I believe that the Bible is just like a handbook to get you going, just like the book of fear is a guide to being brave that's a direction and i have tried you know i didn't try anything i just wrote the damn thing and i'm just saying damn because i also was happy when i was done writing it it's a beautiful starry sky that you won't be able to see we just passed the full moon i believe i have a, an app for that <laughs> You know, that's what, that's the perks of being so disconnected from nature, right? But I know how to get by. So I also just used my flashlight. Um, and a flashlight, you know, these weird, like, vagina-shaped silicone things. Please get rid of it if you have one. And if you considered buying one, please, like, humble yourself to wait for a woman my friend there's nothing to win in buying sex toys because you have fingers you have a mouth and you have all kinds of body parts that can use to induce pleasure in a woman and the same goes for the woman she has everything you need and you have everything she needs and what is sinful about giving each other pleasure? I mean, pleasure is the only thing that... It's a relief also. But you have to have direction. Because if you're just looking for pleasure, you will end up in a whorehouse. Well, now you could ask, is that bad? Well, maybe not bad. I mean, I think it's bad. I never did that. I had friends that did it. And they tried to get me to do it as well. And I said, why would I pay for that? You know, don't you want a woman to give her love freely to you? Because she just loves you so much. 
because you have to pay for the shame of going and paying, you know, to buy the body of a woman for 20 minutes. And how long is that going to feel good? Yeah, probably 20 minutes. And then how often are you going to repeat this? Well, if that's what you like, do it. But don't be afraid to be judged a little because you're going to judge yourself. And that's the same with masturbation. I mean, if you can get to a place where it feels good for you to masturbate, the, the feeling I have is that it's nice for some time and then it's just a drag. I mean, you don't want to because, I mean, come on, you take a woman, you take a man, you put them together in a room and what's going to happen? Energy is starting to flow. If you're alone and it's the night, well, the feeling comes. It's like, oh, wow, you know, I feel attracted to you. Oh, wow, I feel attracted to you. I mean, who are you? I've never met you. And I'm still uncertain about this, you know. I think the spot for wifeness is open. I think if you want it, you know, fight for it. No matter who you are, I cannot be, I think, restrained because it's not a woman. I thought it was all the time the love of a woman. <sighs> the knight is angry at me. I can feel it. The knight is angry. Why? Because I've renounced her too often. Right. I always avoid the knight. Well, what does that even mean? You have to open up to the night. You see, that's where I have to take these things seriously. Because shit can happen in my life. Like real shit can happen in my life. That I wasn't aware of simply because I failed to pay the respect that nature is due. So what is this trying to tell me? I take these things very serious. Because I know uh, that a woman can rip out my heart just like that. You know, women can be nice and they can tear you apart, emotionally tear you apart. Like literally. I mean, there's women, if you fail to love me, I'm going to fuck you. You know, I'm not going to fuck you. I'm going to play emotionally with you. <sighs> okay, that's telepathy. That's oneness. That's what I said when the pastor asked me, but where do you draw your faith from? You know, I just spoke to him about what I believe, what my thoughts are, what my feelings are, why I do what I do. And he seemed okay. He asked me, okay, I have the feeling you know it. You are there where everybody thinks they want to be. Yes, sometimes. After I, you know, ate a chicken, <laughs> I really recommend you the movie Anywhere, Everywhere or something all the time. I think it's called like this. It's kind of Asian made, probably Japanese, or Chinese, <laughs> Korean even, something like this. Anywhere, I think, everywhere all the time. You know, if you look up something like this, you're going to find it. It's basically how this works. So I'm not always there. You know, I eat something, I feel heavy. All right. I just masturbated. You know, I feel weak. All right. You know, I just ran five miles and I get back home. My feet hurt. Question, why do they hurt? Well, I don't know, man. Because things are tense. You know, why does things, you know, why, why am I not just enlightened? Well, do these yogi gurus that sit around in in the middle you know let's just call it like this in the middle that manage to keep the energy in an entire city you know flowing peacefully um well what was i saying it's focus that you need in order to be whatever you think enlightened is. It's focus. 
be here in the moment and perceive as much as you can. Be conscious about as much stuff. That's oneness, my friend. Being connected to it all, sitting in your tiny, you know, sweaty apartment in a summer night or in a winter evening where it's cold and the heater is on or the radiator and to just sit there, do crochet and feel incredible love for your grandmother that already died or for your grandfather that you haven't even met physically. You know, that's it. It's focusing on what matters the most, which is the love you feel for whatever it is. You know, I don't want to talk about this because that's knowledge that I worked hard for to get. You just have to have the compass facing in the right direction. Now, right, wrong, left, whatever. You know what I mean. That's Pocahontas. You have a feeling of, oh, wow, it's tingly. And where's it gonna lead me? Well, look at the damn compass, you know? Well, all right, but I don't know how to look anymore because I'm blind, because I've looked at too many screens and I'm always looking at the surface. You know, I've never learned to look inside. You know, that's what the TV is. That's what your phone is. It's just the surface, my friend. It's a... Uh, it's running away. It's running away from how you truly feel by just looking at something that looks funny. But if you really look at it, like really, I mean, you can stare at it for hours and then you observe yourself, wait, how do I feel? You know, you've been drinking alcohol for weeks on end now. You know, you just can't get rid of it. You call yourself an alcoholic. Okay, you know, acceptance, you know, I'm an alcoholic. Well, that's identification, let go of it. Nobody's an alcoholic. You may like drinking, so I assumed it Alan Watts and so I assumed it I because I'm still a human. I'm a speck of light that's connected, you know, you know, it's like you've got a light bulb burning in your room and then the moth comes and sits on it. Yeah, but it cannot sit on 100% of the light bulb, you know, it's going to burn itself on, let's say, 5% of the light bulb. And, you know, there are different rays, you know, some parts of the light bulb are brighter, then there's a center and then there's outside and, you know, there's like single rays and each ray represents one of us, right? That's just a representation, it's a metaphor, it's a simile. You know, I go around and I enlighten the world with the perspective that I worked hard to have, which is trying to be as non-dual as you can, which is if you say something is bad, you look at the good parts, right? It's like, was Hitler bad? Well, without Hitler, there would have been no war, which meant my grandparents would have not been refugees, which means that they would have never had to escape or move somewhere else, which means my parents would have never met which is, you know, they would have never had children. I wouldn't be alive. So, you know, Hitler bad? I don't know. You know, yeah, duality. You know, I'm alive because of Hitler. So I can say thank you. But everybody who feels like, you know, you were screwed because people were taken from you. Well, now you have to deal with that. Was it good? Was it bad? If you say he was bad, you know, what could be good about? I don't know, man. You know, you learn to love people from a distance now. Oh, thank God, right? I lost my grandparents because of Hitler, because now I could finally learn to open up to them. You know, I could meet, you know, I could learn to meet them just when I sit alone at home and I close my eyes and the candle is burning and I focus on the light. And I realize the candle is me. And suddenly around the candle are sitting all kinds of other candles, other beings. 
and you can have a conversation. How does that work? Where do they come from? Where do they come from? And where are they still? Do I just imagine this? Well, does it feel nice? Yes. Does it matter then? Probably not. I mean, I'm not, I, I'm not watching pedophile porn or something to get off on it. No, I'm sitting quietly in my room and I'm focusing on the light. Keep quiet. So the moon is a woman. And while I walk here, I am being guided. I cannot tell you what's guiding me. But somebody's guiding me and says, now you can talk. Now you cannot talk. Why? I don't know. There are trails of energy. There are things I don't understand. You know, I feel fear. And in myself, there's a part that just wants to scream. And I feel this often, like there's something here, like I'm not even walking on this road, like I'm not even walking on this road. And now I've got a voice that says, it's good, continue. You know, it's like I'm shooting a movie or something, but these are the emotions that I feel. It's an ocean of emotion. It's the primordial soup of the universe. It's where everything came off. It's oneness. It's holistic. All is one. <sighs> it's enough to drive you insane. Who's screaming on the inside? Um, you know, I think it's a screaming. Why can't I just talk all the time? You know, sometimes I start walking and then I start walking and I start talking and then I come to a point and it says stop. Now you have to be quiet. Why? Why can't I talk here? Why can't I talk then? You know, am I stupid to follow directions? Right? Oh, wow. The night is dissolving things also. I mean, you often see it. You walk around and there's a shape and the shapes look, the shapes look like animals or something or spirits. I mean, have you seen plants at night? completely different. I mean, if you're at night in the forest and you have a torch and you shine it at them, they are bioluminescent, but on a different level, on an energetic level. Like the spirit world changes at night. It's different than during the day. Why should I be afraid of it? Ah, just read the Carlos Castaneda books. That's all I can say. I have to take the knowledge where I find it. And in the end, it's just fear, right? You know, but people can bewitch you. Like they can bewitch you, a woman's eyes. She can put a charm on you and you're in love. And you're in love. Like, what are they looking for? As if you'd find anyone. It's like strange. What are you looking for? You see, and that's also the thing. Stay in the now. Focus on what is. Just keep going. When you, you weren't, let's say you're in a situation, you realize, okay, there's something. You know, I've had this situation and I was walking into this village, city center of Polokwani, which is a South African city or yeah, like a smaller city. It was previously known as Louis Trichard. Trichard, I am just pronouncing it how I think it's pronounced. You know, it's like uh, Tragelaphus Elaphus, Tragelaphus Elaphus which is the Eland, I believe, if I remember it correctly. Or it's the Kudu. 
No, that's Tragilafos scriptus. You know, that's still in there. Because I like this information. And now I could just access it just to show people. Yeah, I think I know what I'm talking about. You know, I think was it Milampus, Milampus, the Impala. I'm not sure about that one. You know, I don't have to cling to it. I don't have to really flash around my knowledge. And it's not often that somebody comes and asks me like really deep questions because he certainly understood something and he recognized something in me. And when I talked to him, he just said, you're open. And now you can say, well, maybe you're just hiding yourself. I think he felt hatred towards me. And that's what you have to get used to because he's a pastor, he's supposed to represent something, but he's not sure about what that is anymore because everything is in turmoil, you know, church, good, bad, you know, what is it? And then he has to, you know, he thinks he has to believe and that's what he has to understand. That if you want to continue preaching as a pastor, under the Christian church, but you've just been awakened to some kind of higher truth. You know, just don't stand there and because you're still teaching, preaching to Christians. And if you want to continue doing this, you just teach them what you learned in Christian. <laughs> you get it? So you don't speak about, yeah, you know, I just started reading the Quran. No, you can say that, but then you have to pack it right so that they can understand it. You can say, there's a, no there's a lot of knowledge also in other religions. And it would be wise to learn how to accept them all. You know, it's like having children. You have to love them all the same. It's like, what else could it be like? It's like, you know, so he asked me, but what if, you know, what did he say? He said, what if it's not true or something? Or what if, what if, you know, you could call it fall from grace. Or what if you realize it's not true? And then I'm not sure what he said or how he phrased it specifically. Well, what I said is, yeah, but I know. I know it in my heart. I just know it. Okay. And well, I know it. And he got that. He got it. He could tell it from the way I said it. There was just no doubt in me. Like there are a couple of things that I don't doubt. And then he said, but who do you turn to? And I say, oneness. I said, Einheit, which is oneness in German. And I said, that's what I turn to. No, I just, Imagine you're living your life, you know, now it's saying, the voice is saying inside me, oh, that's a good one, you know. You know I, I can even enjoy sharing, <laughs> you know, because like, oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a nice one, you know, you can really say it like this. You know, that's how people can understand. Who's saying that? Is it me? You know, is it someone I love that's just, you know, that just likes to be around in my thoughts somewhere? Is there someone guiding me? You know? And sometimes when I hear something, I can just make sounds so that whatever is there knows I'm there. And it's like a deer. So that the deer doesn't run into me. You know, that the deer knows, oh, somebody's coming. And then 
the deer can leave. Okay. Because I have no vicious intent. I'm just walking here. Doing what I'm doing. And every time I want to stop, a voice says, keep going. It's going to be all right. Okay. Two points that I'm trying to make. I live my life and I'm constantly looking at a star. And that's my compass. Now that can, that star can be anything. It can be just, you know, it's just something in the distance, something you're looking for. This star can be a bottle of beer when you get home. You know, let's say you haven't drunk beer in a while. And then you think, wow, I'm really looking forward to this. This star can be a chicken, just the way I made it. That star can be a hike, anything you like. Which is why I plaster my life with the little things. Right, going to the boulder hall, bouldering without a shirt, because I dig it. I love bouldering without a shirt. I just like being without a shirt. Yeah, maybe in the presence of others, because when I'm alone at home, I usually wear a shirt. <laughs> but I can do it. But I also have to know, okay, you know, why do I do this? I just want to show myself. I want to be seen as much as I can. I can't help it, I want attention. Apparently, which my content clearly states, I want attention, focus on me. That's what people say. I make music, I create content because I say, focus on me. Don't look at the shit. Don't look at the shit all the time because that's how it has you by the balls. Look at me. Look at me, look at my content, hear me speak. You know, I can continue for hours. That's why, okay, I'm gonna give you a video per day because I think it's better if you just listen to me who doesn't really wanna sell you anything, who just says, okay, I have feelings, I talk about them, you know, I say what I think, I feel. You know, if you're on the verge of saying, you know, I think I just wanna kill myself, you know, you just listen to me every day and then you get your footing back. Just see me as a friend that you probably will never meet and that's good because it's possible you wouldn't like me because I'm an eremit. I like being alone. That's a gift. And if you don't get that, that there are people out there creating content on YouTube because this let's call it the system, is just a giant network of shit. I mean, it's holding itself together through force. And that's rape, right? There's no love anymore. And that's why I go to the boulder hall and a pastor comes and asks me questions. Because if he would have figured it out, he wouldn't have had to ask questions. Um, sure, it was nice. He listened to me, I gave answers. Now who's helping who? Um, I'm just helping with my presence because I know how to hold myself together. I know how to let go of judging myself. Which means, yes, yesterday I watched porn. If I identify with that, I'll be a sinner for the rest of my life. And maybe that the camera will turn off soon. I will just continue talking until it does. And so, who's helping who? Well, if I pride myself that I helped him, or he prides himself that he helped me, Nothing good will come out of it. He has to accept that there was a teaching. I have to accept that there was a teaching for both of us. He comes from a different area of faith, but he was a true man. I mean, maybe he was true in my presence. It's possible. Um, 
because you know I cannot be true to a lot of people and they keep listening to me I mean we had a let's call it a nice conversation let's call it a nice conversation and I know how to keep the focus right on the moment I know how to channel the energy you can say now I actually don't know it I simply let it happen I have to let go and stop controlling these things because I didn't want to sit there at some point anymore but it said you just have to accept this now there are going to be people that are going to want your time you've put in the work you've changed yourself right maybe you have done a lot of emotional work or whatever you work through your hatred now you feel so much love and you want to share it I'm just saying be careful who you give it to and how much you give and you're gonna fall many times you're probably going to meet people and you're going to give them love and then suddenly you gave them love and then you want it back that's where you have to t you know hit the brake pedal if you realize they take too much um, maybe retrace your steps when did I become the needy one because you know you as a human you do not have the power to just create life or take it away I mean you can have a child but you cannot just go around and say you know ah oh, I'll just let a deer pop into being you know that just happens that's just part of you know the thing that's just part of life you know it just happens you just accept it that's just there you're not walking around saying you know I'm God I'm creating this of course if I walk at night here in this area you could say oh yeah I'm filling this area with consciousness yeah but a plant is conscious is it not you, we could even go so far and say a sign is conscious and that's actually I've never seen it that way I mean that's one of the best and most liberating realizations or insights I have ever had because I always thought I have to be as conscious as I can be with everything and I'm the one keeping everything erect and now suddenly you realize wait a second everything keeps itself erect I mean it's the plant's job to keep the plant erect right and it's the man's job to keep the penis erect which is why masturbation can be a way to get a very hard penis if you just focus on you no know, you just have to keep rubbing it I mean that's what's called sharpening the sword and when you start and you're young you know I don't know everybody's different I was always you know I was wetting the bed when I was a child I came really early always I came really early unless I smoked weed and now it changed you know I learned to keep the energy within so what did I do well, I just trained the focus on the energy to not slip it away from me which means that if you get to the point where you say you know that's the climax instead of shooting it out into an ejaculation you just say okay pull it in you know let it flow up and it's hard to say you know of course doing that with a woman is a completely different story but I manage sometimes I just manage and that's what you have to get to that you you know humans these days they get pleasure from releasing what you have to learn if you want to grow you know you have to fill the pond to have fish in them and then you have to clean the pond so that the fish will you know survive so it's not just about you know the holy grail is within you you know energy is starting to fill you up when you stop masturbating and if you don't have an outlet you know you're gonna look for one 
which is why pastors turn to little boys because they are being told you cannot have children why because the church says you know you have to devote yourself entirely to the church because you know you could seize power for yourself right you could then have your own church you could be a pastor or priest or whatever i don't know bishop i don't know how these people i don't know their hierarchies right who kisses whose rings it's just power hungry idiots which means you know if you start having children you want to pass something on oh yeah now you've got a pastor child but then you train that child but the church wants to train the new pastors because otherwise they would lose control because they live in the fear of losing control because they want to be powerful because that's how they draw energy hey what's this oh red lights just like I mean I've got a long way ahead of me and that's what you have to prepare for because that's life so I don't know if you suddenly meet a pastor and he asks you these questions you think hmm I think I've learned a thing or two and it's starting to show why is it starting to show makes no sense you know if I would tell you what I did all you would say that makes no sense and I would say I agree <laughs> and that's the madness that's what people are afraid of right so I don't know what this is it's life you know seems like life looks like life feels like life and what is it well how the fuck should I know am I allowed to say fuck no is this part of spirituality well how the fuck should I know I can say fudge but it doesn't matter because there's no hate in the word fuck it's just the word you know and if you put too much meaning it's like I mean if like the word fuck is like you know screeching with fingernails on a, a blackboard you know well then you've got to work with that what do you identify with the word I mean I think it's fucking amazing you know, it doesn't have to be a dirty word it's only dirty if you make it dirty and I realize now sometimes I speak and I say something and I see the connection in other people's minds to breasts or something you know I can speak like this on purpose because I know you know you see men in the boulder hall and you know they just look for butts and tight yoga pants you know you know some women they climb and I think you know why do you even wear clothes yeah, of course that's coming from the guy who's wearing shorts and no shirt you know how much more naked can you be so I'm also starting to relax a little because to be honest if there would ever be a woman that uh, could stand living by my side then what would happen well let's say she would come bouldering with me and she would like how I climb with no shirt and she would say hey I'm gonna wear the tightest pants that I find you know and then I'm gonna wear a sports bra and I'm gonna wear a sports bra you know that's going to show my nipples you know just to tease you a little and just to tease all these men well I think I don't know I don't think the I don't know I don't think the woman would do it because you know I do it but it's a fine line between you know walking around without a shirt you know taking it off in the boulder hall because I'm the only one who does it there are people that that take off you know that just walk around in a um, like a tank top but there's basically nobody I see that takes off their shirt and it's hard to say why 
because they're afraid to show too much or they're afraid that people may see you and they're too vulnerable that's what it is you know i've done my fighting whatever it is i've been fighting you know i've learned my lessons okay you know i can show myself i don't have a problem and if you come and hit on me i'm just gonna say right you know unless you really mean it but you know if i see a woman and i just see a little child because some women may come they're like 17 or something and i just see that you know i mean what am i supposed to do with you you're just gonna break i mean go live and then come back you know travel through time and come back i don't know in five years and then we can talk and while you know i don't know who maybe no one you know is preparing herself to be my wife you know i'm just living my life and i say no i cannot control this because we're talking about another being here a woman you know a beautiful child in a female body and i'm then that beautiful child in a male body and together we can get together as children in these adult bodies and have sex and play around because that's how adults play but an adult is still you know every soul is a child so the question is of course what does a plant feel when it's being eaten by i don't know what well how do you feel you now let's say you would be eaten by a bear how would you feel well it would probably be something like this ah, nothing you know pain 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 nothing you know that's it so what are we so, so afraid of i mean because if you are in a situation where there is pain you know like birth well then you use the methods that you know that are gonna help you deal with the pain which is breath work breath control you know if i walk in the cold and bare feet and no shirt i cannot talk to you all the time it's just impossible i can't do it which is probably why i record all the content now in nature so i can give you summer in winter awesome you know because this is still somewhere probably this might be already february and it might be january um because so then in winter i don't know what i'm going to do you know i don't know you know there could be somebody right around the corner which would make no sense but that's life you know that's what i want to be open to that's what i want to be open to you know i meet people that want to go hiking a hundred kilometers you know next weekend or tomorrow you know next weekend we're gonna hike 100 kilometers it's like wait a second how often have you done this already well never we're gonna do it in one day 50 there 50 back like okay good luck you know go for it well you you can join i'm like yeah you know i'm in bare feet i'm pretty slowly you know i take my time you know if i make 30 in one day you know that's good you know 100 that's just stupid you know okay if you want to run it then go run you know i like walking wow my neck i have to maintain my posture but i've also done a lot of climbing you know, so you know you do you you know that's the best thing you can say to someone you do you you do you right you like hiking go hiking and so i also met a, a friend who was there with some other guy yeah let's just call him a friend just for let's just be a bit nice to whoever we meet on the road right because if i just keep saying i have no friends you know it's just not the kind of friend i used to have it's more like i mean he's 18 he said 19. i don't know he just keeps getting older and that's normal but truth be told 
Okay, I made it out alive, right? I often have voices in my head that say, what you have is too precious to just give to anyone. There are women that I see, you know, I can love them just like this. I don't have to touch you to love you. That's what some people don't understand. I don't have to touch you to love you. I can just love you from a distance. I can love my ancestors from a distance. I can just keep them in my heart. I can light a candle for them. Or I just remind myself every day, make it a habit. Always remember everyone that you love, you know, that's a hard one. How often do you want to think of people? Usually I do it a bit different. I live my life and I just focus on doing my work, doing my job, because that's what, you know, that's what I do. And when I, you know, like an image of a person comes up, I just think of them in a loving way. And then sometimes the image of a person comes up and I feel so much hatred. Uh, you know, so now I don't go there. Too many people walk there. I don't want to walk through it. Is that necessary? Do I have to protect myself? Does energy cling to places? Absolutely. I just know how to wash it off. Which is why if I feel shame because I've just masturbated, well, I wash it off and I make sure that it will, I will stop masturbating at some point. But it's a transition. Nobody manages, you know, a child doesn't just walk. No, there's a hundred attempts, even attempts that nobody sees. Well, the child is start trying to get up and walk. But the parents don't always pay attention, right? They assume that when the child makes a step, it's the first step. But maybe the child already trained. Are you there at night? Maybe the child is standing up and walking around in its crib while you're sleeping. And then, you know, it's just waiting for the right moment. And then it says, here, look at this, you know, first step. And the parents are like, wow, you know, his first step. And the child thinks, no, it wasn't, you know, you know, I've already trained. You just never saw, you just never saw me, you know, or maybe I already knew I could do it. I was just waiting for the right moment, you know, maybe I just don't like my daddy. And that's why I take my first step in the presence of my mother, because I want her. And then she's going to come and like, you no, know, no, you can't walk now. You know, you have to wait for your father. It's possible, you know, but why does it really matter? You know, oh yeah, nice, you can walk. You know, good job, you know, I can walk. You know, now you can walk. You know, that's why we're here, to learn. So if I'm not allowed to practice, you know, what do I think? You know, I just read the Bible. I'm a pastor. Who made you a pastor? Did God make you a pastor? No. You said I want to be a pastor or maybe somebody else said it, but you made the choice to become a pastor. You made the choice, right, to follow whatever path you're on now. I mean, you're a carpenter. I don't know. You read a lot of books but you're still a carpenter, but you read a lot of books because you like reading books. Does this make you a bad carpenter because you should be stupid? No. I mean, there's women that do crochet that probably never read a book in their lives and they're enlightened. I mean, you hear these stories where Ramdas talks, you know, sometimes he says things that he never said in any other talk. And then he says, you know, I was giving a talk and I was talking about all these insane spiritual enlightenment states where you meditate and you're like awesome and you're this and now I'm going through this trauma and now I feel like that and you know the whole cosmos is opening up in front of me and then at the end of the talk you know he said there was this old lady looked like 90 something or so like really old and she was all, all the time nodding and she kept nodding and nodding and I thought, what's this? And so I kept, kept saying, you know, more and more ludicrous things, which were still true. You know, I'm just saying it for him now, right? <laughs> Repeat after me. And so he was just trying to show off then because she kept nodding and he thought, well, how is this possible? It's just an old woman. And then she came round 
after the talk and she said, you know, to me, to him, to me could be me. <laughs> Who's Ramdas? Hey, it's me. You know, just a different version. Um, yeah, whatever. You know, I can feel for anyone. And then the woman came and said, just before the camera is going to go off, you know, the way you described it, that's exactly how I feel. And then he says, but how? Well, I've been doing crochet. I mean, do you get it? What's crochet? You sit around and you focus on what you're doing. That's meditation. It's the same as doing these prayer beads. So, I mean, what are you still telling me? What? You know, we want to talk about the devil. What's the fucking smartphone, my friend? Well, that's not the devil because it's just sucking you in. You know, there's no creation anymore. You don't make food with a smartphone. You just listen to stuff others have created. That can be useful, but you can also find that inside of yourself. But I have to admit, if I would have nobody to listen to, well, I would just listen to myself. But it does, it is, it is a nice, okay, it's a nice pastime activity to listen to other people. Uh, it's a nice, no, exactly. It's a nice pastime activity to listen to other people because, you know, if I listen to you, if I listen to Ramdas, then I can also bring examples of Ramdas. Um, and then we can relate to each other. Oh yeah, I also like Ramdas. You know, nobody, I know one person, one that listens to Ramdas. You know, I have told people, um, I have told people about Ramdas. Most people are not interested because he speaks English and people don't understand English, but I do. And there are some people that understand that like listening to Ramdas. I don't always listen to him because he seems a bit too soft. You know, that's a, uh, yeah, okay. You know, I don't hear him talking about going barefoot in the forest and hiking a lot. And when he got older, he got fat, which means he got lazy. And I don't want that. You know, I don't want to give off responsibility no matter how I feel. And so when you ask me the question, what are you going to do if you, you know, if just all falls away? That's Job's message, right? You know, sometimes life takes it all away from you the women you know the things that you like you know it's gonna take it all away from you and that's the best place to be in because you can start anew it's no not yeah it's not the best place to be in no okay i'm just checking i'm back in a city environment that's different there are people I have an expensive camera. You know, when somebody comes, I have to be quick. You know, I have to be on point. You know, so if I would go hiking in Canada, okay, it's different, you know. So I just realized I'm probably never gonna do that because I'm never gonna step in a plane again. And that's such a relief because I hate flying. You know, if I travel, I don't wanna be you know, stuck in some kind of airport. Because I don't need to go anywhere. And that's what they try to tell us, right? You know, I don't need to go anywhere. But things can come to me now. That's how I feel like. It's the law of attraction. If you get to the essence, no, part of the essence if you uncover something in yourself okay then suddenly there's like okay truth you know that's how I feel 
that's the kind of being that I am. I like certain kinds of things. You know, all the women I had fell away. Okay, I didn't have a wife, I didn't have children. All right, maybe I did, I don't know. They're all gone, you know? Everyone I thought, you know, that's my wife, they're all gone. Okay, could be that I was wrong about all of them. Could be that I wasn't about all of them. You know, so I just have to check where is she going to come from? And who is she even, right? That's what I have to keep to myself. You know, if I know I have to keep it, maybe I know, right? Maybe I know. And it's possible. But in some ways, that's still hard to believe. That's so hard to believe. I don't want to hear anything about this from anyone. You know, not even in myself. Of course, if somebody really wants to talk to me on the inside, I have to listen to it because it can be really annoying. But I don't know often who's talking. Um, so I have to test it. So I'm just gonna say, leave me alone. If, if you want to be here, you know, in my arms, you know, then be there, right? Don't talk to me on the inside. And that's what I mean, right? Don't talk to me through the shapes of other women, because that just makes you a coward. That's just hiding around in dark alleyways. You know, pretending to be a woman that you're not. You may not understand what I'm saying here, but I know fully well what I'm saying here. Because beings can appear in different shapes. And that's just what you either believe or you don't. But I believe it. And I have certain experiences that back this stuff up. You know, there are women that can do what you may call sorcery. You know, a woman may look you in the eyes and charm you. What does that mean? Well, figure it out. If you can't get her rid, you know, you can't get rid of her. What does that mean? Well, why do you think priests say, you know, or the church burned witches, they say they're evil, they deceive us. Yeah, because they're soft and wiggly and they can turn your head around from your you know I'm holy and then it's like oh wow you know that's the humpback from Notre Dame that's the humpback from Notre Dame you know Esmeralda dance Esmeralda you know that's the humpback from Notre Dame um, Frollo loves her he wants her but he cannot because of his place in life. Well, he chose to be this for whatever reason. And now the question is, well, if you pride yourself to be a priest, you know, if you realize actually I want family, I want children, I want a wife, you know, just turn your back. You don't have to become a a dick about it you just say hey you know you know I I learned my lessons now I just have to work with the ideas of being a failure because I don't think I'm a failure you know I'm just living my life and if you think that you know you're some kind of spiritual priest well you have to really test yourself what are you telling people what are your true intentions and which intentions are only why oh, I still have, you know, that's now often I get to the point where walking becomes a real drag, you know, where the backpack just becomes a little bit uncomfortable in a way you just think, Phew. you know, now there's a, um, well, there's a place where I could go just get a coffee or just get another beer 
And then the voice says, just do it. Yeah, but how much can you allow yourself? How much can you allow yourself? Well, that's a good question. I haven't figured it out yet. Well, I don't allow myself many things, right? I don't allow myself porn anymore. I don't allow myself sex anymore because I'm, and that's true, saving myself for that woman. And just saying, I continue to tell you this without having the guarantee that I will ever see her again, right? I just have the feeling of truth and love and that just keeps me going. I don't know when my existence will stop. How long will I continue to exist? How long will I, you know, I just know I never give up. And whether it shall be this form or another, but I think the time is right. And if you believe in souls and the path, you know, some, a car just stops you like, are they going to shoot me? You know, that's how afraid I am to miss out on this. Um, you know, I really want to keep living. And the further I go, the more I experience and the more I realize what really matters is, right, you choose always. And if you choose to be a priest, then try to be a priest and appreciate <laughs> Appreciate, appreciate, you know, the job that you're doing. You know, just keep doing it in the way that you want to. And that's a hard-earned truth that you may still have to find out. Now we're getting to a point that's very important. Okay, they didn't have drinks anymore. Is that an omen? I don't know. It's just like, well, we don't have drinks anymore, right? No, that's like truth in your face. No drinks. Okay. You know, do I like this? Maybe. No, it's just the way it is. You just accept it. Maybe you're not going to be the drunk monk or something. Um, point that you know, I was just there, I was standing there, and then I heard like a thought. It was not coming from me, and the thought said, you, you'll see what you will get out of this. But not like that, it was saying, you'll see, you know, like, you know, you have to pay the price for that. And then I was thinking, wait, does this have to do anything with me? I didn't have the thought before I entered into the space, the vicinity of these other two people. And I had the feeling 
It wasn't the man. It wasn't the woman. It was the man. And now I can think about, okay, why did he say that? Because if I walk around and I identify every thought with myself, then it's very hard. Because you, you know, that's what I, you know, I sometimes say things to people and then I have to accept them also for myself, which is, you can never take anything personal. Which is why if you stand somewhere and there's a thought coming, like shooting through you and the thought is like, um, you know, what's the thought going to say? The thought is going to say, yeah, like just what it said, you know, you're going to see, you know, you're going to see, you know, what's going to come out of this, but like in a really aggressive way, then you think, what does that mean? Okay, now you can linger on it. The feeling I had, because I don't want to project a lot of negative stuff onto my life, because question, what's bad about this? What's bad about it? Okay, question. I went upstairs in the boulder hall. I drank a beer. I went down and this guy started talking to me. Now, I thought this was a blessing or something positive. But the truth is I opened myself up to some kind of weird person. I have to judge these things for myself. Um, because the truth is, I would have never asked him to join me at night through the forest. That's a fact. Because I don't trust you further than I can see you. You tell me you're a priest? Who are you? And what do you do? Because you talk like you've done some really bad things. Like you talk like you're really deep in shit. And now you come to me and you just want a perspective that helps you to feel good about yourself. Well, all I can tell you is, well, if you've done bad shit, you have to learn to let go of it. If you cannot stand it, you know, that's the story about Voldemort. You know, he split his soul into several parts, you know, whatever number. And to do that, you know, he killed people. You know, he killed more people. But only some, you know, he used to split his soul into parts and hit them in the horcrux. <clears throat> well, if you can stand the killing, but there's also a difference. Let's imagine you were some kind of Viking and you lived in a village. And then let's say an enemy, an enemy or somebody who was after your life for whatever reason comes and you kill him, then you're killing in self-defense. Now, if you're a real, 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 like, you know, uh, ahimsa is the non-killing, I think. If you were a real kind of person like that, you would do nothing and the guy would kill you. Or maybe he wouldn't, you know, that's hard to say, right? But somebody comes and you assume, I think he's gonna harm me or my family and you protect them. Okay, you deal the blow. Yeah, I could live with myself in that situation because all I did was protect myself, right? But in any other event, let's say a man becomes greedy for a child or a woman becomes greedy for a child and then they abuse it and kill it. Well, that's going to cling. I mean, that's going to leave a stain. Well, how can you wash yourself? Well, just, you know, I don't know. I think every man deserves the right to let go of his crimes. And you see people that sit in prison and people come and say, well, how could you do that? You're a monster. Pfft. What are you telling me? I know that's then the answer. You know, I know apparently 
Okay. It's even bad talking about it. Because if I talk to you about things, you know, that I pick up from people, things they feel bad about, you may start projecting.